Welcome back friends. Today we are going to explain the PWM project code that we did in the last video. If anybody missed that video, they can visit the link in the top right button or in the video description. If anybody are new here, this is a video series especially designed for STM32 ARM development platform. We will be understanding the STM32 Cube IDE and basic ARM development concepts for effortless coding. I have ordered all the video into a playlist and you will get the link in the description. So let's dive into the topic. We understood from the video on the timer that there are different types of timers available basic general purpose and advanced timer basic timer cannot provide pwm feature of timer thus we should go for general purpose timer in stm32 g474 mcu timer 6 and timer 7 are basic timers these details you can get from the data sheet of the mcu in general purpose timers we have seven timers timer 2 is one among them and for advanced timers there are three timers other than this there are other timers like high resolution timer low power timer Timer, watchdog timer etc right now they are not in our scope we can understand a little about general purpose timer it is an advanced version of basic timer so definitely it can function as a basic timer thus it does include a basic timer block inside right and there are four timer channels we can use these channels as either input or output and there is a set of capture or compare registers if timer channels are used as input channel then there are some filters associated with it to condition the input signal and in this case we will be using capture property of these registers suppose if channels are configured as output then we will be using compare property of these registers what are all these things don't worry you will understand all these things soon in this video for pwm application we are generating a waveform thus we have to configure this channel as an output channel so we will be using output compare registers in this project we are going to use same pfi pin as timer output pin but we have to check if it is associated with any general purpose timer for that we can refer the data sheet so go to pinouts and pin description check under alternate functions and now we see against pfi pin we have all these alternate functions available for this pin but we are interested only in general purpose timer only time 2 or team 2 is associated with it so we have selected team 2 hope you have understood this now let's see the configuration part of team 2 in the stm cube software slay mode should be disabled as we are going to use internal clock as the clock source now down below we are not going to use any trigger methods for the timer so keep this uh, second field as disabled next is clock source either we can use internal clock for the timer or we can use an external clock in this case we are going to use internal clock next you will see all the four channels down one by one we are going to use channel one for uh, our timer two module and that channel we can configure in pwm mode there are other options like we can use it as input channel or more generic output compare channel also but we are going with pwm channel right now next we will see the parameter settings you already know how to find out prescaler and error value for a particular time base i can just explain our objective now before that let's understand what is a pwm signal we know for a microcontroller there are only digital outputs right means either we will get a high signal or a low signal high signal always refers to supply voltage of the microcontroller in the present case of stm32 g474 it is 3.3 voltage low signal indicate a zero voltage Suppose we have to glow an LED with a little brightness. In that case, we can take the help of a PWM signal. PWM signals are generated by varying pulse width or on time of a signal. In screen, you can see several signals. In the first signal, signal is high or on for some time and it went low or off after that. If we check the on and off period, they are equal, right? So we can find out the duty cycle here. Duty cycle is the ratio of on period to total time period. Since on period is half of total period in the first signal, duty cycle is 50 percentage similarly for other signals duty cycle would be 33 percentage and 75 percentage respectively coming to our objective we have to generate a 50 percentage duty cycle waveform in a signal with time period of 1 millisecond if you are still watching my video it means that you like this video so i would be appreciate if you could like my video and if you want to watch similar videos from me you can consider subscribing to my channel this will motivate me create more such content okay back on track if the timer clock is 85 5 megahertz to generate 1 millisecond time base we have to use this prescaler value and this error value correct i don't want to explain this as i have already explained about this in the video showing on the top bar next field is counter mode 
general purpose timer can count up down center align mode is another count mode which we will see in some another video next is dithering this is helpful in power electronic application in order to reduce electromagnetic interference but it is not relevant in our application as we are not bothered about noise here so keep it disabled the next parameter is also not relevant for us as it is the clock division ratio between the timer clock frequency and sampling clock used by the digital filters inside mm? okay let's leave that Next is auto reload reload. This should be enabled for proper timer overflow. So don't forget that. Trigger output signals as we are using in order to trigger other peripherals. So we don't need that uh, for time being. Next parameter group is the most important one for us. Since we select a timer channel one for VWM generation, this parameter group has been appeared. There are uh, different types of VWM signals we can generate in this channel. Now we can select VWM mode one. Next is pulse. Before explaining that, we can understand how how a VWM signal is generated using the timer module. As I explained earlier, there are capture and compare registers in a general purpose timer. We can use the term compare register because we are using timer output channel. Our timer has been configured with account mode. So once we start the timer, the counter register will be incrementing and we are getting a high output in the timer output channel. Now the compare register will come into picture. It is holding a value and we are calling it pulse value. Okay, so this value will be compared with value in the counter register. Let's see an example here. The period has been set as 8 and uh, we have stored a pulse value 4. Now suppose we have started the timer in PWM mode. It starts with 0 and then it increments. If the pulse value is greater than the counter register value, we will get a high output in timer channel or at the PWM channel. Since 4 is greater, we are getting high value at the PWM output. And as time passes, at one point, counter value will become equal to pulse value. In this case, pulse become equal to counter value 4. That time, the timer output is toggled from the high state to low state. Then it continues in the low state till timer overflows when it reaches the period value. So at 8, timer overflow has been occurred. Counter resets to 0 and our PWM output also toggled again. So we get an output waveform like this, isn't it? It is not exactly 50% duty cycle but around 44%. You can just calculate using the on time and uh, total time period. By adjusting the pulse value, we can get waveform of different duty cycle value. So I hope you have understood the concept. Coming back to cube IDE, here we have filled the pulse value as 0 because we are defining its value in the code. If you want a fixed duty cycle, you can define the value here. Like in our case, uh, we developed a 25 and 50 percentage duty cycle wafer. If we need only 25 percentage duty cycle, you can put 25 percentage of period value here. I believe uh, you can calculate that value and similarly for 50 percentage. In our case, I want a duty cycle to be defined in the code portion because it is uh, required for our next topic. Next one is uh, output compare preload. Its default value is enabled. I am not able to find this parameter for timer 2. If anybody can explain about this parameter in the comment section, it would be a great help. Next parameter fast mode is used when we are using trigger feature of timer. Since we are not using that, we can keep it as disabled. Next is polarity. We just explained the PWM operation, right? There, uh, when timer starts and until counter register value is less than pulse value, the timer output channel was high. It is because we kept this channel polarity value high. If we make this to low, then situation will be reversed. Timer starts with a low output value. And when counter value exceeds the pulse value, we will get high output at the timer channel. Next, we move to the clock configuration, right? Timer 2 is attached to APB2 bus. So we have to see the APB2 timer clock here. We wanted a 85 megahertz initially and later we used 170 megahertz for higher resolution. Playing with the different clock is quite easy. Just put some values and you can click on uh, resolve clock issues. Uh, the previous video explains about it a lot. You can just have a look at it. Now we can go to the code portion. We have to write code only in the main.c file. We have uh, two duties here. Firstly, we have to start the timer in PWM mode and second is to define duty cycle or the pulse value. For a starting timer, HL team PWM start is available to us. It is similar to timer start function and uh, we are using HL team set compare in order to modify the duty cycle or pulse value in runtime. This is uh, basically a macro function defined in the timer header file. Since we use this function in the while loop, always the pulse value will be returned into the CCR or capture compare register. If you are defining the pulse value in the STM cube window, then you don't need to write this function here. So let's uh, summarize 
customize everything initially we should uh, select the pin which we required as a timer channel then we can find out the timer channel associated with it using the data sheet but we can go in the reverse way also for an available timer channel we can choose a pin which we want then we have to set that pin as the timer channel in the cube software then according to the duty cycle and clock which we required configure the timer clock in the timer mode select the clock source in our case we selected the uh, internal clock then we can select pwm generation for our uh, timer channel then under uh, timer parameters fill in prescaler and arr value select uh, counting mode whether up down etc then of course uh, you should enable auto reload preload then under pwm generation you can select pwm mode we want in our case it was pwm mode 1 then uh, pulse value either you can define here in the stm cube software or at the code area then of course channel polarity you can keep it as high or low in our case we set it as high then coming to the code side we should start the timer in pwm mode next we can update the pulse value or compare register value using the hl team set compare function so i hope you have understood the pwm operation there are several application lies in the field of power tonics with pwm maybe in future we can discuss all those applications let's dive in this big ocean together hope you all there will be with me next is a beautiful and interesting video using the concepts we have learned about the pwm feature of timer so don't miss it and please don't forget to share your valuable comments and suggestions in the comment section you can share this video who are struggling with pwm application of microcontrollers so we'll meet you soon bye